Uh, Michael in Houston, Texas. Dear Bible Geek, I find the notion of hell to be abhorrent, and I often call Christians to task for calling a being who would torture another being forever good, whether such a being exists or not. A very common response that I hear is that God doesn't condemn people to hell. People choose to go to hell by rejecting Christ. As applied to someone who doesn't believe that Christianity is true to begin with, this seems analogous to the case of a uh, that a poisoner might make at a murder trial. Sure, I secretly placed poison in Mr. Jones's wine, but there was an antidote in an unlocked cabin in the room when he expired. He chose not to retrieve it and drink it, just as he chose to drink the wine I had prepared for him. I am no murderer. I merely assisted in his suicide. Do you think this is a fair analogy? Is there any suggestion that anyone chooses hell in the Bible? Do you know when and how this characterization of the non-Christian's choice originated? Thanks. This is the single stupidest, most disgusting uh, spin I have ever heard from Christians. I mean, there's some awful bad ones out there. But I've heard this one zillions of times, and it is so idiotic, it, it just... Uh, discredits whoever offers it. They, you see what it means? They know it is morally abhorrent to picture gentle Jesus, meek and mild, condemning you to have the imps of hell gutting you with tridents and twisting your innards over the barbecue for all eternity. Right? They know that can't be right. You cannot speak of God as a father if he's going to not just kill, not just judge, but torture his creations, most of them, for eternity. I don't care who you're thinking of. Uh, Genghis Khan, Adolf Hitler, Mussolini. Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't care who you have in my Nancy Pelosi. Nobody deserves that. There's not a Stalin for Paul Pot. No, none of them deserve that. With a God like that, who needs a devil? Right? And, and uh, so they know that's wrong. Nobody could not know it is wrong. So they're trying to weasel out of it. Oh, <laughs> uh, God doesn't actually send them there. Uh, no, no, uh, they, uh, they choose it. Yeah, that's a ticket. What? Hey, get out of here. You know, send in somebody else, maybe from the Flat Earth Society, for me to talk to. It's just such nonsense. It's such Bullgeschichte. Uh, and the, the first one I ever read that said it was uh, C.S. Lewis, who was quite a Bullgeschichte dispenser. I have a love-hate relationship with old Lewis, a very clever guy, a very fluid and fluent writer, but full of nonsense uh, and uh, he he said this that god res god respects human freedom so much that he created hell if you really don't want to be in the presence of god he'll respect that by sending it down the chute into the eternal fire get out of here uh, that is such that is orwellian nobody chooses it and for somebody to say well they didn't actually choose it but it's tantamount get the hell out of here uh, and and the the conception this implies of christianity as a personality cult that you just got to believe in jesus and if you don't that's enough to merit eternal torture Get the hell out of here with that crap. Uh, is that historic Christianity? I'm not sure. I seem to think historic Christianity has a bit more to do with actually doing stuff that is morally reprehensible and receiving some sort of a punishment for it. But uh, And what a mockery this makes of the saving death of Jesus, if you believe in that. Yeah, yeah old Jesus uh, went to the cross for you, and, and he was trying to save you, but obviously it didn't work very well because most people are still going to be damned to hell. Maybe he should have saved himself the trouble. 
it's just uh, you know you can't imagine that Jesus tried to save everybody and it worked. Oh no, no, that can't be. Uh, so I, it is just so ludicrous. I don't know where where that piece of uh, sickening sophistry originated, but that just shows the absolute moral and intellectual bankruptcy of the faith that offers such a defense. I once said to a bunch of Unitarians, we ought to go around uh, challenging believers in hell to public debates uh, because that belief in hell and that a morally perfect God condemns people to hell means that uh, believers have redefined morality to make it compatible with torturing. I mean, God is your moral paragon, right? And if he can do it, it must be uh, legitimate. Uh, well, this is just terrible. This is awful. Uh, it's like uh, those Nazis that say that uh, Hitler was the avatar of Kalki. And uh, now you're worshiping the devil as God. Uh, we need to challenge them on that and assume the moral high ground and say, you are blaspheming God by making him the, the, the uh, owner of hell, the lord of damnation. And you, you may say to yourself, well, I don't really believe in God or, or heaven. And, well, look, I, I don't either. The important thing, though, is not that uh, some people are going to heaven, but rather nobody is going to hell. That's the gospel we ought to preach, as the universalists once did. Yeah, so, uh, sorry for the, uh, sermonette.